to Charmed Life, a radio show discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm your host, Trisha Carr. Thank you for joining me on this gorgeous fall day. We are in the uh, in betwixt and between season. We're in fall, and a lot of cool stuff happens at this time. We're seeding. We are we're setting intentions. And even if you don't know that you're intentionally setting intentions, you are, I promise, because you are nature. You are not just in nature, but you are nature. And we are functioning with nature. This past week, we had a full moon that was also a harvest moon. Jarvis, how are you today? Did you ha- did you feel some effects from that big old moon? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I think I still am. I keep not being able to sleep. Have you been having that issue? Uh, just a little. I've been waking up for like an hour or so each yeah, night since yeah. the moon. Yeah, I haven't been able to sleep all the way through. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. crazy. Well, anyway, Jarvis and I are always like on the same page. So uh, besides that, I I wanted to tell you guys just a couple of things before I bring my (laughs) exciting guest on today. One thing is that if you live in Southern California or Los Angeles area, I am now teaching in person, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited, Jarvis. You should know this, too. I'm going to be teaching in person some classes in, um, currently they're at Bur- in Burbank at the Crystal Shrine, which is this beautiful store on Magnolia. And so my first class is going to be on 1021, uh, 2017, depending on, you know, just so you know, if you're listening to this in an archive. And if you're listening live or you're listening in the next week or so, please do go to my website and you can go to trishacarcharm.com and to my booking page and you'll see to ha- how to actually book to come to this class. It's just $20. Space is very limited and it's going to be really gorgeous. The class that I'm teaching is about how to be an empowered empath and highly sensitive person, how to make those empathic, sensitive feelings that you have that sometimes make me, might make you feel like a victim or overwhelmed and actually utilize them for the intuitive ability, skill, and strength that they are. Use them in the way that you intended to on the soul level when you came here. It's actually supposed to be functioning for you like a superpower. The other thing I want to tell you about is my friend Hillary Michaels, who is the teacher of mediumship. I've mentioned her before. Her website is happycentric.com. And Hillary has advanced intermediate and beginner mediumship classes. I actually took her uh, mentoring program for mediumship and she is just a fantastic medium. So the uh, and I mean teacher actually as well. Really great at pulling out of you your unique talent. So I wanted to tell you as I have been promoting her mentorship for mediums that she's actually has a two month waiting list right now. So <laughs> she's that good. So um, go and check her out anyway. And if you wanted some immediate support on how to open up your mediumship abilities in particular, then you can always book a life reading with her. So go to happycentric.com. Hillary Michaels, she's an amazing teacher. And I'm also teaching a lot of classes, too, with uh, an amazing colleague that I am going to introduce now. Her name is some a name that I men- mentioned several times on this program, uh, probably Jarvis, like almost every show, if not every show. Yes, she is an intuitive channel and spiritual teacher, as well as the founder for the Lightworkers Lab online spiritual community, and it's Crystal Ann Compton. Welcome, Crystal. Oh, no, and now we can't hear her. <laughs> Uh-oh. There you, you are. Yay. <laughs> Hi. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. We've been trying to get this together for a while. I know. I've been bad, but I'm here. No, you haven't been bad. <laughs> it's challenging. Yes. It is. It's challenging. You are so busy, and I'm just so excited to have you on and let everyone actually see your gorgeous face and hear your amazing voice if they haven't yet. They probably have, though, because I talk about you so much. If they like to listen to me, they're like, okay, she's nagging us. I have to go check out this woman. <laughs> Well, let's start off, Crystal. Please let 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 us get in. Let's get into Crystal. Tell us all about okay. Crystal. <laughs> Tell us about I don't know your journey, your work. Uh, let the audience know from your beautiful heart what what's gotten you to where you are today. Well, first of all, thank you. You're very very <laughs> sweet. I appreciate that. Um, well, as you said, I'm a spiritual teacher as well as a channel and an energy worker of sorts. But I was born, as you know, in Hawaii, and my father was born in Hawaii. And it's a really magical kind of ancient energy there. Like Mm. the people there are very connected to the earth, very connected to spirit. So my father was like that. My mother, although she was from SoCal, was also quite psychic. So by the time I came into the world, 
all psychic and intuitive and seeing stuff and talking to spirits. I had an infrastructure in my home that was very supportive. They were able to tell me as a psychic child what I was experiencing, what I was feeling. So I was never told it was wrong. And as a result of that, I was able to flourish as an intuitive child. Mm. But speaking of my journey, you asked, so it's kind of a long story, but um, my father, while he was very spiritual and very connected to the land or to the Aina, he was also very abusive. He was a substance abuser and he was an abuser of people And as some people know, as victims of abuse, that also kind of develops your intuitive sense. And I was always sort of putting out feelers to try and see what kind of mood my father would be in or what was going to happen that night or what was going to happen that week. I was, as a result of all of this, just a really, really psychic kid, but also a really traumatized kid. So when I became a teenager, I started looking for a bit of stability or what my friends seemed to have, you know, a nice family, like a house with electricity. And (laughs) I ended up, which was great, with running water. Um, I ended up being invited to a Pentecostal church when I was probably about 12 or 13. And I went, and while it was a little weird, it wasn't too weird for me. And they were actually really embracing of me and very supportive of me. And I ended up becoming a fundamentalist Christian pretty Mm. early on. And I stayed in that faith probably for about a decade, maybe 12 years. I was a missionary to Samoa, to Tonga, to Fiji. I was in the worship team. I was sold out and radical for Jesus, for sure. I was really, I was all in (laughs) with Jesus. Were you, Crystal, were you you on mm -hmm. fire for the Lord? I was on fire. I was so, I was on (laughs) fire for God, but I was, what I was looking for was just a father really. Mm. Um, somebody that would protect me, somebody that would love me, somebody that would give me that safety and that stability. And I found that in the church. But at about the age of 25, there something happened and we won't go into it, but I had a moment of clarity where everything just sort of fell away in a moment. And I was able to see the church, the system of the church for exactly what it was. And when that happened, I made a decision to leave the church Mm. and it was really scary and and i know you were also involved in fundamentalist christian you know how scary it is to like leave that system the borg if you will that had supported you and given you everything and begin to wander on your own in your own personal desert which is what i did and as i wandered i left the church i wandered i started kind of going back to my roots those magical kind of ancient energies that were so natural to me when i was a child I started reading things, looking into people like Edgar Cayce, who's a big inspiration to me. He was also a fundamentalist Christian. Mm -hmm. And I started reading his work and slowly but surely returning to who it was that I really was. But the reason I mention this is because while I was journeying and while I was out there on my own, I would have loved, believe me, to have had a community of people around me, not a church necessarily like the church I had come out of, but just people who were not necessarily on the same page, but they were on the same path, moving Mm. in the direction of something higher, searching in a deeper way. And so I bounced around. I I think I became a member of a unity church, a universalist church. I sought out paganism. I like looked into all sorts of different sub communities, but I really never found what I was looking for. And so probably about a year and a half ago, I think, um, on a whim, on a lark, I ended up developing the Lightworkers Lab, which is the online spiritual community that you referenced. And hi to the lab, by the way, because I think you're sharing this in the lab. So I just want to say hello to everybody there. Hello, lab. We love Um, you. (laughs) The spirit kind of has always done that with me, just given me a download and it felt important, but it was so quick and I just did it. I just acted on the impulse. And a year and a half ago, I did that with the lab and it's turning into that community that I truly wish that I could have had 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And I'm just really excited to see where we go from here, where we're going to be next year, where we're going to be five years from now. So that's kind of my story in a nutshell. Oh, it's amazing. And Jarvis is also from fundamentalist Christianity. And so he gets it. He he totally gets it. I call Jarvis and me, sometimes I refer to us as expats, like (laughs) expatriates of the church. But it's really crazy. I found Crystal on YouTube and 
of, of which she she's very prolific on YouTube. How many over 300, 350 videos on YouTube? I'm almost at 500. Woo! I've yeah. watched them all, so <laughs> I just Thank lost you. count. <laughs> Thank you. And but it does sound like you're telling my story, except that it was Texas instead of Hawaii. It's really crazy, Crystal. Even you know I have a similar background of having abuse, and with my father being an, a substance abuser and abuser of people, and also kind of the same path of about 12. I, I actually got baptized at age 11. And it wasn't that my parents took me to church. I took myself to church. The, the, the distinction is that I didn't have the benefit of people in my family understanding anything about intuitiveness. My mother was actually very afraid of everything spiritual because she had been raised very fear laden. And so she was even afraid of church <laughs> because <laughs> church just made wow. her feel like she was going to hell. That's all she ever heard when she was in church. Right. So anyway, uh, but it was for me as well, like it, there was a really strong break at about age 24. I started to pull away at age 19, but then at age 24, I was like, no, it's just not working. And it was really, it's very much like stepping out into the abyss and like, now what? Right. Because the only paradigm I had been offered was this is spirituality. This is how you get it. And I had, I just didn't even have any idea that there was another option. And so I actually was spending time just trying to manage my emotions and my affects, you know, and the sensitivities right. that I had. So that's that's where I went from there right away. And then I did find some teachers like Deepak Chopra, Dr. Wayne Dyer, mm -hmm. and Cartole. So let's get back to the lab, though. Um, I am so honored to be a member of the lab, not, first of all, but to actually be, you know, teaching in the lab and, and working with you in the lab. And it's just, I cannot even describe, you guys, this... This space that Crystal has created, and I know you always say, and we, we are creating it. The entire community is creating itself. It is a living organism. Right. And, well, you know, you, you kind of mentioned, you said, you know, you were looking for a community that you weren't necessarily, you had to be on the same page, but you're on the same path. And that really does mm -hmm. speak to the lab. And would you, what would you say about, I know someone might wonder, well, well, what is the spirituality of a spiritual community? Are, are there certain beliefs or practices or systems of beliefs that are there? Is there a population that is more leaning to Christianity or Buddhism or paganism or something like that? How would you, what is that your feeling or summary of, of that question that someone might ask? I think you could take a sampling of the lab and you would come up with all sorts of different diversity. I think we've got paganism there. We've got Buddhism there. We've got agnostics there. I think we have people who might not actually believe there, but there's something inside of them that's causing them to search a little bit. And, you know, there's that scripture in the Bible where God says, come, let us reason together. And as I was journeying, I always reminded myself of that because what that scripture is saying is come use your brain though, you know, right. and really think about what you're doing in this life and think about who you feel it is that I am, says God, and reason it out for yourself. Search, look, read books, talk to people. And that's what I think you're seeing in the lab. You're just seeing a lot of people who are fellowshipping for one, just getting to know like-minded individuals. There's, we strive very hard in the lab to have no judgment. We don't have, we're, we're trying to be in alignment with love at all times, but we're also very inclusive of all kinds of thought because you never know what's going to resonate with one person. It might not resonate with me, but it might really speak to where they are on their journey. So I really couldn't even tell you. You tell me what you think about the lab. I couldn't tell you. I, I agree. Uh, I, I, just, I think I, I was going to say, I think, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> There's right. a little bit of a delay. I was going to say that I think because I, I founded the lab and I, my personal journey is kind of now dipping into this esoteric Christianity, or I, I am returning in some ways to the affection that I had as a child for Jesus Christ mm. and for the eternal aspects that I found in Christendom. This isn't to say that I advocate or recommend any type of a religious system. I do not. But I personally, uh, that's who it is that I am. So you probably will find people in the lab who are in alignment with that simply because they found the lab through me. Mm -hmm. But as we grow and as we develop, that's going to change. We're going to have all kinds of different people in there. And I love that. And actually, one of our main teachers, the head moderator, Dr. Justine Uselding, who has been on Charmed Life, is a shamanic practitioner. So, you know, yes, there's, love her. there's, I mean, that is a very, 
I mean, a steeped in tradition, um, spiritual kind of practice, a really, really a beautiful. And so I, I agree. No, I, I, I can't put my finger on. I mean, I, I'm here. I was attracted to the fact that you are, like I say, an expat of the Christian church because I do have I had real spiritual growth in the Christian church. But the dogma and the system and the the, the fact that. I couldn't, what I realize now is that sometimes organized belief systems or just anything that has some dogma, which anything has dogma, you know, any kind of organ, especially if you're listening to someone else, you're always supposed to be listening to yourself. But if you're listening to someone else, you're being offered dogma. That's just the truth. Would you agree with that? I I would agree with that. Yes. And that's what I love about the lab and what we, what you and what we are doing in the lab is really promoting sovereignty personal sovereignty for your spiritual growth and your spiritual experience. And we say, hey, this is exciting and inspiring to me. This is what I think about it. And, you know, always love centered and people are sharing and and asking questions. And to that point, we actually really work. You work really hard to make sure that it is a safe and sacred space for expression. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) I I take that very seriously. And, um, you know, I've come under fire for that. I've been criticized for that. People don't recognize that I am a person with my own spiritual path and journey, but I'm also a manager of a community and communities do have to have rules and Mm -hmm. we do have to have, we do have to have some form in order for there to be growth and in order for the light to really be able to shine. If you have like, we're on Facebook, you know, we're on the internet and on the internet, you're going to find people who just want to troll. They just want to break things down. I don't know why that's in the human nature, but it is. And so we're very vigilant to make sure that that doesn't happen in the lab. And so, yes, I, and I just think <laughs> I just think of all the people who are joining, just dipping their toe into the pond of spirituality just to see if something might resonate. I am so very protective of those people. I want them to have whatever it is that they need in order to make the right decisions on their journey. And so, yeah, you already know I'm. Well, we have a lot of moderators and we have a lot of people patrolling the space, but we 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 take that very, very seriously. You have to. Yes. And it's not to say in the patrolling that's done, it's always we just are are measuring it against love, kindness, support. If there we can have, like you say, healthy debate and discussion with opposing points of view or you know, opposing is a strong word, but with differing points of view, that is valuable. We we appreciate that, but always with kindness, always with the, I, I like to even think of it beyond kindness, even making the assumption that the other person is doing the best that they can and even trying to I hear their tone as a loving way, in a loving way. So if someone says, <laughs> well, that's just what I think. I, I'm, I try to hear it first, like she says, oh, well, that's just what I think, <laughs> as opposed to, well, that's just what I think. <laughs> You know oh, I, mean? I know you, you've taken me to school a couple of times because oh, no. I've had I've come I've been <laughs> triggered a little bit by some people and their behavior. And you're like, well, let's just reframe it and let's give this person the benefit of the doubt. Let's let's but, just assume that they're coming from a higher perspective and get yourself out of the lower perspective. So, yeah, no, you, you really do have to take that view but you've, when you're loving a community so actively such as we are. But you've been right most of the time. <laughs> well, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 you yeah. know, there's no harm in giving them a little space to correct their tone. I mean, sometimes that happens. And speaking of you giving people space, there was we had an incident. We've had a few incidents in the lab where people are really on their absolute worst behavior. One time in particular, somebody who was a lab member just straight up ripped off one of Crystal's classes and like copied and pasted everything from Crystal's website and put it on their website. <laughs> Uh, they they did. It, we, it was it was bad. It was bad. And Crystal, the amazing soft hearted person that she is was discussing it with the moderators and saying you guys I don't know maybe she made a mistake and one of our other moderators was like oh hell no (laughs) that would be Lauren yes I'm sure she doesn't mind us (laughs) she was she's like I want to get up on do a live right now we want to talk about it um but yeah those are the growing pains that you experience when you're working with with a lot of people so but I love it um, I have to tell you a little story. I had a neighbor. His last name was Carr. I think I've told oh, you about it. Yeah. He was a, a pastor, a Christian pastor, and he had planted churches. He'd been to Africa doing those big, you know, revivals and stuff. And he was such a lovely person. But by the time that I met him, he had gotten out of ministry, gotten out of service. And I asked him why. And he said, it's because of people. <laughs> I just can't anymore with people because his, I think his own brother stole his church and 
so on and so forth. And so he just had a hard time dealing with the nature of people. But you just kind of have to get a little zen with it, understand that human nature falls on a spectrum. You're going to have some people who are in that really high vibration and you're going to have some people who are just trying to figure it out. And then you're going to have some people who are just trying to make trouble. Mm -hmm. You just have to do the right thing and always from love and try not to wear yourselves out. Yeah. That's what I try to do. And I actually, it's funny that you say that I do remember very specifically saying, I think while I was kind of starting to exit the church saying, um, the problem with church is that there are people there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. But that's kind of the problem with the earth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and look at Jesus. He had problems with people. You yeah. know, he said to Peter, get behind me, you devil. Yeah. You know, to he's Peter. sipping over tables. <laughs> he's calling people broods of vipers. I mean, he had his problems with people and that's just part of this experience. So yeah. it's, it is a challenge bringing together a group of spiritual seekers, but it is also so very rewarding. I should take a moment to say we are taking calls, 323-524-2599. I actually am hoping that we might get one or two people who are members of the lab who would call in and give us a little testimony about that. Actually, Crystal, I think, as, as Jarvis is telling me, we do have someone. Would you like it if we take a call? I would love that. Oh. Yes. Hi, you're on the air. Who's this? This is Michael. Hi, Michael. How are you, Trisha? Hi, Hi, Crystal. <laughs> is this my? Is this micro? Is this Mike with an R? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yes, Aww. Mike with hi, an R. Yeah, hi. French name. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling in. Oh, I really appreciate you calling in. And yeah, if you, were you calling in to tell us how it's? Because Michael is a, a member of the lab. And would you like to share? Yeah. Your, would you like to share your experience with being a part of the Lightworkers Lab? Yeah, I'm just amazed at all the parallels I'm hearing between everybody's background and Christianity. Um, I was baptized myself when I was 14 years old. I walked up to the altar and said, I want to accept Jesus Christ into my life. That was my decision, not, not anybody where I live. And, um, and unfortunately, it took a turn for the worst. And so, um, you know, here I am at home. I have a menorah in my living room. I have Lakshmi, Ganesha, and Durga in, next to my fish tank, and I have a uh, rosary in my bedroom. So I have a little bit of everything. <laughs> That's and, great. Um, I love it. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I found uh, the Lightworkers Lab through Trisha's videos. I had been watching the uh, World Angel Summit, um, the most recent one, and I've been doing angel card reading since 2001, but only for myself. Mm. And I just started exploding about 18 months ago, going crazy, and then I started seeing 1111 11 everywhere, and, and I'm big on num numeric signs. So I was like, this means something. And then when I saw Trisha's show, I was just blown away. I was like, okay, you're not strange. You're not weird. <laughs> and um, I just decided to, I was um, going through, I wasn't a member of Facebook at all. And I decided to become a member because to promote my blog. And then suddenly I'm in the Lightworkers Lab, and I am hightailing it on spiritual growth like you wouldn't believe. I'm just so blessed. It's a wonderful experience. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. And so, Mike, Michael, you, um, you, you participate in the lab a lot. And what I mean by participating, we have, we should say, we actually have um, live teaching and readings that are going on at least five nights a week and often six or seven days of the week. And is this, this is the kind of support that is, again, making you feel like you're normal or, you know what I mean? Like there's some kind of community, right? <laughs> yes, totally. Um, I, I so enjoy watching all the readings and I did my second uh, pop-up reading. I gave my own reading myself uh, yesterday morning and um, I'm getting over a cold and I was, I was feeling like crap physically, but spiritually I was on fire. I'm like, I got to do this reading. I got to do this reading. And I just had the most wonderful connections with everybody in the room. It was just amazing. And, um, and it's just amazing how, you know, I'm able to pick up on these messages and how I hear them. And, and, and through watching other people in the lab, realizing, oh, that's exactly what I'm feeling, you know. Again, you're, you're not going crazy. You're not hearing voices. You're not going nuts. This is part of the process. This is part of developing your gift and, and, and growing and it's just been a, an amazing experience and watching crystal videos and um, your classes, Trisha, and also uh, Justine, she cracks me up. So it's just so much positive energy, so much love. It's just, it's such a great space. 
Thank you so much. Crystal, do you, <laughs> I don't mean to, you probably want to <laughs> say something. I do. Like I just want to say that, I mean, I'm getting like chills. I just, yeah. Mike is the kind of member that I get really excited about. This is somebody who has been disenfranchised. And we have a lot of wounded people in the lab, people who have come out of systems and who were wounded by those systems, but who are just starting to realize that all of these psychic abilities are actually very natural to the human experience and who are stepping into and fully occupying this experience. And with regard to Mike, um, I have a very good friend. Her name is Brett Butler. I've mentioned her to you and she's, um, she was, ha she was under, she was the star of grace under fire, but she's also a medium and she did a reading for Mike and she wrote me and she's like, I just love this guy so much. I'm in love with him. And I have to say with Justine, I probably get, <laughs> a text or an email like every other day saying, I just love Mike. I love him so very much. So he's just somebody who's very excited and also very, very grateful for an opportunity to be with folks who are a lot like him. Again, not exactly like him, not exactly in the same beliefs or anything, but on the path with him to support him to develop and grow. So I just love that. I love it. Uh, thank you so much. I'm just so blessed to have found this, this um, platform to be able to meet other people and Brett's just amazing and I, we had an exchange of emails yesterday and um, <laughs> she's, she's awesome just, uh, I, the synchronicity the synchronicity involved with Brett was just mind-boggling I'm a huge fan of the show the leftovers and I hadn't seen Brett Butler in probably a decade and then I see her on the leftovers gave a knockout performance and then not even two days later, you posted she was a medium, and I was like, "This is it. This is this is what I need to do. I need to get a reading with Brett." And and she has been such a teacher for me, and it's just been amazing. She's fantastic. She's fantastic. Um, I have a lot to say. But I won't say it here, but like I really, really adore Brett, and I would love to get her on your program, Trisha. I oh, think you, and I know that you're gosh. going to be scheduled for a reading with uh, Brett as well. She's amazing. She's a person just like us. She's going through the same types of things that we are, and she's just so encouraging and such a beautiful, beautiful soul. I'm so excited to connect with Brett, and because I, I was an actress before too, so uh, I know I have a lot in common with her in that way too. Because I realized that the reason I was an actress for most of well from youth until um early adulthood was because i was channeling <laughs> that's what just was the way right. i knew how to channel it was that in the church that was the way that i could connect I did, I did professional acting as well back in the um 2000 2001 so it's it, these parallels are just blowing me away yeah <laughs> Wow. <laughs> we all found each other. <laughs> well, <Yay>. Michael, <laughs> thank you so much for calling in and sharing your experience. Thank you. And thank you so much for being oh, such thank you, Crystal. a bright thank light. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you, Crystal. We'll, 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 catch you. You. we'll catch you this week in the lab. Thanks <laughs> for calling. Definitely. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Well, actually, Crystal, we do have some more calls, but I wanted to I wanted to just ask you one more question um, before we take another call. And so hang on for us, please, callers. I wanted to just touch upon, you know, what is the overall purpose, goal, path, um, you know, what we're looking, what, yeah, I guess maybe the purpose, the central purpose, as well as sort of the path we're leading on. You know, what, what so far as the spiritual side and then maybe even the plan, you know, what would you like to talk about in that area? You're talking about for the lab? Yes. For the lab. For the lab. lab. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's a work in progress. I receive, you know, inspiration and, and downloads, if you will, from spirit all the time. But where I see us going, at least in 2018 and, and developing from there, is just really becoming an enrichment and an educational platform. The lab is going to be somewhere where you can pop on any time of day and just get what you need as, as a spiritual person or as a light worker. There's going to be a class that will really teach you what you need to hear. There's going to be somebody doing a healing or offering an inspiration. There's going to be readers. And again, this is free for all members. So it is a service at a really high level for everybody who wants to be a part of it. 
We are also going to start being a little more organized with some of the classes that we're going to offer. In 2018, we're going to put together a calendar of classes that are geared toward specific spiritual development and even intuitive or psychic development. We're also going to be partnering with some of the members of the lab to put on some intensive type of programs for that deeper. Well, you're doing one right now, but for that deeper, you're doing your empaths and your high, your highly sensitive people mm -hmm. immersive which is wonderful by the way but that's kind of what i want to do i want to bring up more teachers jeremy who is my husband and i have always said that this isn't just about me um and sometimes people like to make it about me but i don't really want that to i want it to be about us i want it to be about bringing up all the people who feel within themselves that they came here to do something important with their lives whether it's teaching or reading or healing or whatever it is. I want them to have a space to develop that and I want them to have an equal part in that. And so that's what the lab is about. And as we go forward, it's not just about me and what I'm doing. It's not just about Trisha and what Trisha's doing. It's about all the members and ways that we can help them to shine their light. I don't know what we're gonna look like in a year. I'm excited about it because I think it's gonna be really awesome. I don't know what we're gonna look like in five years, but I know we're going someplace really great and I trust it. Well, I'm going to give my testimony. I just realized okay. that that would be <laughs> really smart because I actually noticed just this morning that November was when I joined the lab because I, I joined the lab at the time. It was for people who were students of crystals. And so I took one of her classes and then became a member of the lab. Since then, the lab has opened up to the public again with, um, you know, agreements that you're going to be um, minding the guidelines that are about it being a safe space and all of that kind of thing. And then, and, but now it's, so it's we still are growing rather slowly because we want to make sure that we're serving everyone. But I, like I say, I noticed that it was just November of 2016 that I joined the lab. It was also the same month that I did my very first Charmed Life on UBN. Was it? Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. So some crazy, that's some crazy alignment that I actually just noticed this morning. I think I was actually Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel. <laughs> he was talking to me this morning about, you know, the time we were going to have together. And he pointed that out to me. And I can't believe I hadn't noticed it before. Yeah, and I haven't either. And I know, Interesting. I know you work with Gabriel, which by I the do. way, I'm... By the way, I normally when I connect with Archangel Gabriel, I say Gabrielle. I get more of the feminine energy, but I know you get the masculine energy, so it's funny that it popped up. I do. <laughs> I'm connecting I with do. that aspect, your aspect, uh, your relationship with them. But um, since then, in this one year, I mean, I have this show going, which is... I mean, it basically all of my dreams have come true by just having this show going, being able to have a place, a community, which I had been searching for my entire life as well, and um, having the facility to practice my uh, teaching and my reading and everything that I'm doing. And just, you know, like I started just last month, me partnering with the lab and doing a class and intensive. It's just ridiculous. And, and well, not to mention about a month before that, even you and I partnered to mm -hmm. uh, do the teacher's development program, which is a really exciting program. This is actually amazing. Let's talk about how that is a, a part of it that in the readers and healers development program where we're actually helping people to groom to become spiritual teachers in their own practice partnered with the lab you know online it's a really it's it's a amazing um you know just wealth of opportunity i think absolutely and it's for people who might not even know well for the teachers program it's you might not even know what your message is or mm -hmm. what you're supposed to teach but you have that still small voice that says i really need to be talking about something. I really need to be inspiring people in some way. And so the program that we've put together is for all teachers, all motivators, all inspirers, people who want to use their voice and use their message to change the world. And we take them from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And I love how you're modeling our program on the chakras. You should probably speak to that. But we take them from the foundation, like getting in touch with what it is you're here to do and getting past the blocks where, oh, I don't know if I'm worthy or Esther Hicks is already talking about that <laughs> and, and having all of these issues that light workers tend to have. And that's because we have integrity, by the way. Right. I like to tell light workers the reason you doubt is because you have integrity and you want to be the best possible light worker that you can be but we take them from those types of doubts those foundational issues all the way to production mm -hmm. like this week we're teaching them about you know podcasting and cross posting and how to really get themselves out there and shine their light it's exciting now Justine Uselding who as you said is one of the head moderators in the lab she's in charge of 
the Readers and Healers Development Program. And this program is for folks who, it's not to teach people how to read. You, you should know that you can read and how to do that, but it is to teach them how to do that on an expanded level and in specific in the lab, like how to get up on a live broadcast and how to talk to maybe 300 people and start doing readings and doing do inspirings and just how to put yourself out there in an expanded way. And so these programs are really successful. We, this is the first time we've launched it. We're probably going to do it three to four times a year, and it's just going to get bigger from here. And What's with, your experience been? Well, yeah, and with the Teacher's Development Program in particular, you, I mean, and actually in either program, you could take this program in order to partner with the lab and, you know, like be able to do reading and or teach co courses, you know, you could do it, but you could also just take it passively because it is both are so chocked full of information to just set you up on your own individual practice in, either as a teacher or as a reader, I, I, I think. I, Absolutely. It, yeah. And, I, but to, to the point of what I what else is so amazing with um, online spiritual communities and online spiritual expression? I have gotten so sharp as a reader and healer by doing it on mm -hmm. Facebook Live. It's crazy because you have there's this interesting thing that when you're doing it, you know, when you do a Facebook Live video, people can't talk back. They're they're speaking on the feed. You know, they're text they're you know text speaking to you on the feed, and there's a slight delay from when you say something to where they actually get their text to show up on your screen. Well, when you're right. doing a reading, and we're doing shorter readings and almost like gallery type of readings, non you know remote gallery readings, and you can't you can't wait for validation. This is typically what readers do. We say, I'm you know I see a, a rose. Does that you know does that resonate with you? And we wait. You can't do that. You go, I see a rose. What does that mean? It means this, and you, can, you have to keep going. Right. So it builds. You your have faith. to trust yourself. You yeah. have to trust your 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 connection with source. You can't be asking for that validation. You just have to go with what's coming in. And that really allows you to develop very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And if you give yourself permission to not be that great, if you give yourself permission to make mistakes or even to fail, which nobody ever does, but right. if you go into it just being open and doing the very best that you can, you'll find getting up on lives or getting in front of the community that it doesn't take very long at all before you get very, very good. And you also get addicted to it. You want to do it more. You want to have a regular slot. You want to be up as much as possible. Right. I actually, before I even found the lab, I think before I found you, Crystal, I had gone on Facebook Live into some other spiritual Facebook group to share an experience to just, share, you know, and I didn't even know that people, I hadn't really noticed that people give readings in Facebook Live. I was just sharing the spiritual experience and then people started asking me on the feed, can I get a reading? And I was like, oh, okay, I'll try. You know what I mean? And I just went for it. So I actually kind of got tricked into it because, <laughs> <if> you, <laughs> which is a good thing because it all was like amazing. So I know that I was fortunate in a way that I didn't stand there on that precipice go, oh, can I do this? Can I jump on a live and start giving readings? Who does that? That's crazy. <laughs> right, right. Oh, uh, Anyway, yep. well, let's go to another caller, I think. Yes, does that sound okay. good? All right. Hi, you're on the air. Who's this? Hey, ladies, it's Kelly. How are you? <gasps> Kelly. Ke which Kelly? H. Kelly Halliger. Oh, okay. Yes, Kelly H. Hi. <laughs> well, you can say your last name. Hello, hello. You can say your last name if you want. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, Hi. it's Hall Halliger. I like to tell people it's like the light bulb without an E-N. <laughs> oh, I see. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you so yes. much for calling in. And Kelly is also in our teacher's development program. She is. Yes, I am. So grateful. So very grateful. Well, what has your yes. experience been and like I in the love, lab? My experience with the lab, I just have to share with you. I've been following Crystal for a few years now on her YouTube videos and um, then obviously joined the lab a, a while back. I'm not even sure when. But this community has just been a godsend, not only for myself, but for so many others that I've seen that have since joined and who are getting their toes wet and who are getting deep into the classes and these ladies rock i just <laughs> want to tell you and it is your stories are so you know they resonate so much with so many of us because a lot of us did come from that fundamental christian background and you know for myself i did not have the support system that crystal so fortunately had and you know trisha it sounds like you and i kind of more resonate on that note, but it is like I made in the comment. It's like you, you ladies have developed spiritual parents for those of us who haven't 
had that opportunity, oh, you know, to cool. have somebody that, that trusts and hears and believes and supports us. So A plus to both of you. Well, thank you, <laughs> thank you so, so much. I have to. <laughs> yes, I mean, you are. We're not far, we're not far in age, but you guys are like the parental, you know, the, like the big hug that we all needed. Mm. So keep it oh. up. Thank you. That's high praise. And that like, actually, that, that moves me. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Really beautiful. Thank you. And thank, oh, it's welcome. And thank you, Kelly, because you're there setting the light in the lab with your contribution. And, it, you know, it's, it's all of us together. So thank you so much for joining. Oh, you're most lab. welcome. Mm -hmm. And I love ah. it too, because it's so beneficial. You know, we're active in the lab. And like you said, we also have our everyday lives and mine has, I'm late on my homework. I know I am, <laughs> but I am uh, you know, we're, we get so caught up in everyday life, too. And I find myself now getting on Facebook where in the past, you know, it couldn't be an outlet for those people who just want to be distracted. Mm -hmm. And now I find myself on Facebook only going to the lab, pretty much, other than what I Me have too. to handle for my own business purposes. But most of my time is either spent in the teacher's development group or spent in the lab or in one of the subgroups learning, you know, diving deep and digging in. So I'm so blessed. And I can't wait to meet you guys at the end of this month at the retreat. I was just going to say, I'm Woo -woo! so excited to meet you at the retreat. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. Yes. Yes. Crystal, talk, yes. talk can't about wait. So thanks for taking my call and just for, um, for being you, both of you, for being you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Well, we'll see you next week. We'll see you on Tuesday for sure. <laughs> That's when we have a lesson. Yeah, <laughs> Crystal, um, talk about the Bliss Retreat. This is amazing. <gasps> I'm so excited. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be awesome. We are having our first uh, Lightworkers Lab retreat. It's going to be um, October 27th through the 29th. It's taking place at the Sunrise or Sunshine. I always get that wrong. It's the Sunrise Ranch. Sunrise Ranch in Loveland, Colorado. Um, at present, I think we have about 33, which is a great number, Good master number, number yes. 33 members attending. And it's just going to be a blissed out, immersive, high vibration event. And my intention and vision for this is that we get together as a community. And I believe where two or more are gathered, their spirit is right in the midst of them. And we co-create the lab going forward. We get to know one another and we just learn and love. It's going to be the first time for me ever putting on a retreat and it's going to be the first time for me speaking in public. I haven't done that up on a stage or up in front of people for many, many years other than Toastmasters, but I just feel so good about it and so excited about it. It's just going to be the beginning of something very, very good for all of us. I just feel it. Oh my gosh, me too. It's wonderful. And it's really yeah. cool. You know, we I entitled this episode online spiritual communities, the modern church. And in an, in an effort to sort of, you know, we don't need to use the word church and it's more than church actually, because there is so much education. You know, we have literal academies in mm -hmm. that are from the light workers lab. We're teaching every single night of the week, which, you know, church had some of that, it had some fellowship, but sometimes for me, it wasn't like literal education at church, you know, whereas we're really yeah. oriented that way. We are. And I actually think it's okay to steal some of the blueprint of church mm -hmm. and recreate it or repurpose it for us. And so, you know, in church, we had Bible studies, we had local groups, and I'd love to see local groups develop around the Lightworkers Lab. We had specified groups that, you know, minister to women or minister to children or just spoke to the different needs of the community. And that's what I think we should be developing as well. I know the, the word church can be triggering to some people because again, we have a, a real wounded population coming out of church and religion, but I like to just envision it as a cathedral of light that is global and it's getting bigger and it's getting brighter and it's nothing but good, nothing but good. I agree. My husband is one of those people who is triggered when I showed him the name of the show, he was like, oh, oh that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> because yeah. He's still managing, he was also in fundamentalist Christianity and actually, 
he didn't really have as uplifted an experience like where you and I had gold, you know what I mean? And we had mm-hmm. some real personal experience. He didn't actually feel that. And all he felt was the dogma and the rejection about how, you know, basically you should be rejecting yourself and what you feel and experience is not right. And so um, he's still working on that stuff. But I'm like, no, we're redeeming the word church. OK, fine. We'll just call the spiritual community. <laughs> Exactly. We're taking it, we're taking it back we're and we're turning, we're, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing with it. We are including everybody. Like one of the things that I can't stand about religion, of course, this is not new, but I can't stand the exclusive nature of it. Mm-hmm. Like you don't belong with us. You're gay. You can't be in our church or you're divorced. You can't take the Eucharist. It's so antichrist really when mm-hmm. you think about it and when you read the Bible, it goes against everything that source energy is. It goes against everything that love is. And so let's recreate it. We have everything that we need to do it. And now is the time, I believe, that if you were born at this time in Earth's history, you were born specifically to shift it. We're going through Mm -hmm. a huge transformation on the planet right now in consciousness and in frequency and vibration. Everybody plays a part in that. So I think it's important. Absolutely. Everyone plays a part because absolutely the highest truth is that there is no separation. This is just a singularity with expressions within it. And that means that it is unconditional, which is why the rejection in that kind of those the, the systemized belief system of church or whatever Christianity or any other religion that you may have come from. That's how it was antichrist or against love mm-hmm. because love is unconditional. And if there are conditions to you being right. accepted and I even had some churches where it's like, OK, well, the gay people are allowed here, but we also just want to mention that that's wrong. You're allowed because we want to fix you. <laughs> yeah, like, so it's so condescending. Yeah. It's like you know we love we love what is it we uh, love the sinner but we hate the sin. Yes, whatever. It's judgment. It's judgment. Yes, I was on my way over here because I met my in laws because I don't have internet. That's a long story. <laughs> but on my way over here, I was talking to my husband Jeremy, who by the way is like not an atheist, but he's an agnostic, probably similar to your husband. And he was talking about how he wanted to break off from America because we're crazy. And he wanted to maybe get a million veterans and go to Africa and take over a part of Africa and create a new country. Like, he's crazy. He's just like, I don't want to be an American anymore. He's disenfranchised on every single mm. level. And I'm like, well, I just want to love people. Like, why can't we all just decide to want a better world for each other? Why do we have to like go and colonize someplace or go take over something or be in this human nature that we've been in for century after millennia after all this time? I mean, like, when is it going to change? It's got to change with us. Why can't you just choose that? And he was like, well, it's more fun with guns. Like (laughs) you'd have to meet my, well, you have met my husband. He's very different from me, but he, some people just aren't like that. They don't see change that way. But it's really a very easy thing to do if we can all just agree to be the highest version of ourselves and to be the love that we came into this experience with. That's who we are. Like align with that, return to that, and we can have that. But you got you got to want it, I guess. Well, and I, I completely agree. And as I have, I teach people or I've been taught, you know, spirit showed me that the only responsibility or if if we want to think of it as a responsibility, if we want to heal, if we want to uplift, we want the place to be better. The, the simplest thing. And the only way we can actually make that happen is to, from our own light, believe in someone else's light and ignore absolutely everything else. That's the only thing that can work. And just tell Jeremy that if he builds his colony, (laughs) there's going to be people there. So it's going to be flawed, just like church. (laughs) I told him that. I'm like, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to have this utopian civilization. No, we're humans. This is in our nature to war against one another. It's like, it has to be higher than that. You have to, you have to be able to visualize it in order to get there. And he, he, I just, you guys probably think my husband's crazy. Well, he is, but he's really wonderful. And for somebody who is not on the same page as I am in terms of my beliefs or even really my purpose. He is so very supportive and talk about protective of the space in the lab. He is always watching, very mindful, loves absolutely everyone. He puts on a very hard veneer. Um, He's from Texas, you know, come and take it kind of a thing, but he's really a wonderful, wonderful person. So I hope he doesn't get mad at me. (laughs) No, Jeremy is wonderful and he is very protective. He's for me, Jeremy he's, he's operating from just this profound kindness. And so this is how he's very protective. He's like, no, that wasn't based in kindness. So that, that needs to be watched, you know, that needs to be cared for. That person is not being 
kind to the other person. And so he, he that's, do you agree with that? That's what he polices from is like this real deep sense yeah. of kindness. Well, yes, but <laughs> I also think he's got a lot of Archangel Michael oh. energy and mm. Michael is kind, you know, Michael, he's the source energy's number one homeboy, but Michael's a soldier, you yeah. know, Michael's a protector. Michael goes to battle mm. and we have a lot of people like that and they serve a very important purpose. I'm talking about light worker people, not actually like going to war against other people, but we need people to patrol. We need people to protect and we need people to fortify. And that's who he is. And, and I, and I see now why we ended up together because I needed that because I'm over here creating and visualizing and being in the energy of the lab. And he's over here pinning it down and making yeah. sure everything works. And so I'm grateful. He's wonderful. Yeah, I, I agree. Do, we, do you think we have time for a call, Jarvis? I, I agree. He's wonderful. Sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> Jarvis says we have okay. time for one more caller and we're okay. getting close to the end. So let's go ahead and bring that person on. Hi, you're on the air. Who's this? Hello. Hello. Hi, it's Sue. Sue, hi. Sue, Sue yeah. Hi. Hi. I am also a member of the lab, a very happy member of the lab. <laughs> well, thank you so much for calling so us, I just, Sue. Yeah, go ahead. No, I just I just wanted to give you both some, some feedback. Um, hi, Crystal. I, I've never actually spoken to you, but I'm hi. so excited to have to be a part of the lab. Hi, I'm really happy. Um, that you're I also here as found well. it. Go ahead, Sue. <laughs> sorry, uh, <laughs> sorry. I also found it similar to Mike that called in before. And by the way, speaking of numbers, when I called in, the number was two 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 on the clock. Um, oh, I'm in a different time zone than you guys are. <laughs> um, but yeah, I found the lab through Trisha as well, and I can't tell you how many blocks feel like they're just melting away um, with being with the lab. Like I, I, I feel like, you know, I had gotten myself into this kind of rut where I, I wanted to go from point A to point B and I wasn't sure how to go about doing it and, you know, falling into doubt, the things that Crystal, that you were talking about earlier and being there and being in a place of high vibration and respect and love and all of the amazing teachings I feel has just made me more confident um, because I know that I can say things there and it's okay. Mm. You know, it's, it's as long as it's a place where I'm coming from love, it's accepted and I can kind of, you know, be who I am. And um, it's just a, it's just been a really, really great experience. And, and I even was, because I work with Trisha also. Um, and I was even telling Trisha one time that it's like my new Netflix. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, my husband will be out there watching Netflix and, I just go into my room, put my headphones on, and whoever's on, it's just great. And that's great. I love that. Because besides it being live videos all the time, the whole catalog of the year and a few months are of videos and teachings and readings and everything are available right there in the archives on the, you know, on the Facebook group. Also, we're building yeah. our free online metaphysical library. <laughs> so for members, we are starting to build just a, a lot of spiritual classes on a variety of different things from all of the teachers in the lab. And so that's on the hard site, which is the lightworkerslab.com slash free hyphen library. You can go there. Anybody can sign up and it's going to just get bigger and bigger. There's a lot of cool information there. Just want to just throw that in. That's a good, that's a, a great uh, thing to mention because it's more organized with Facebook. It's just, you know, you see our faces. Hard. Yeah. You have your thumbnails and everything. So you can go and find all kinds of things there, but with a free library, it's going to be really organized and you can find the category of whatever teaching you want better. So, well, Sue, thank you so much. You're so very sweet. Sue is so, I, I can't wait for you. Sue is probably going to take our teacher development program soon. She is incredibly talented as Yay. a reader and as a teacher. And so you guys are going to get to know each other really well soon. I know. Thank you so excited. much for calling Can't in. Wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to take that course. Yeah, I know. I, I'm excited for you to take it as well. You're going to be just amazing. So thank you so much, Sue. I really appreciate oh, thank you calling you. in. Thank you to both of you. Thank you, Sue. Well, we are just about out of time, so Crystal. What? Yeah. That's rude. I'm, I'm just getting started. <laughs>
Oh, well, we should say next week, Crystal is going to be back on, and we are going to be, well, we're going to, we're going to do a longer show. You guys, I, you, you know that I normally do about a 50 to, well, sometimes Jarvis gives me a few extra minutes, <laughs> and I think we're doing about an hour show today. And so, you know, my shows run between 50 and 60 minutes, but next week, when Crystal comes back on, we're actually going to do a 90-minute program, and we're going to be taking a lot more calls and offering readings and healing and advice. I mean, it's an amazing opportunity for you guys to be able to have one-on-one contact with this incredible intuitive channel and spiritual teacher that is Crystal Ann Compton. So thank you. <laughs> but do you have any final words? And uh, again, the lightworkerslab.com is, is the hard site. And then you can find the Lightworkers Lab on Facebook by, is it facebook.com slash groups slash Lightworkers Lab? Or just, like just search for just the Lightworkers for Lab. You'll find us. Yeah. <laughs> um, Final words would just be, Trisha, you're wonderful. You are a light in this world. I am so grateful, mahalo keakua, that you came into my life and that you're offering, not just me, through friendship and partnership, what you are offering, but also to the members of the lab. I know everybody is grateful. And I want to say that the reason that Sue's locks are falling away is because when you encounter a higher vibration than your own, that vibration Mm -hmm. is dominant. It's stronger. And it's going to cause these things to fall away. That's the nature of energy. So the more you put yourself into a community of light, a cathedral of light that is holding intentionally this high vibration, the more you're going to see radical adjustments in your life, which is why I encourage any and all to check us out. And if you are so inclined, to join. We would love to have you. And it's, again, it's free. It's a ridiculous amount of support, free. content, free. education. Um, so that's beautiful, Crystal. I, that reminds me of something Eckhart Tolle, I, I remember reading, he said that a spiritual teacher is like a log of fire. And when another log is placed next to it, then that flame grows. And something I'm paraphrasing, I'm, I may have made it more beautiful than Eckhart said. <laughs> <laughs> I if I do be- say so myself. I think I'm a better writer than Eckhart Tolle, if you don't mind my saying. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> That's um, why I like you. <laughs> I like to joke around. Um, so that that is going to do it for our show. Thank you so much, Crystal and Compton, for being here again. Crystal will be again, be back again next week at 11 a.m. Pacific. And you know this video will be up on YouTube at YouTube.com/slash Trisha Carr. Um, and Crystal's also going to be sharing it on her channel, I believe, on the podcast outlets. You can find Crystal's podcast by searching the Lightworkers Lab podcast, as well as Crystal Clear. Yes. Shall I show, is that all right that I showed this? I mean, yeah, I got to be better about it. But yeah, it's out there. There's <laughs> no, some good stuff there. No, there's good stuff there. If, if, if People need to start from the beginning if they haven't yet. So anyway, yes. so that will do it for today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are.